my name is Allison Jones, and I'm here to teach you how to make pizza sauce. Homemade, fresh, organic in your own home. You don't need to open up a jar. You can make it yourself. So this is my assistant, Michael, and he is going to help me today. <laughs> so go to the store, get some organic tomatoes. They don't have to be anything special. These happen to be on the vine tomatoes. That is a fancy food processor. We have to use our good old fashioned blender. Yeah. And usually I recommend chopping these up or you can do breaking them up. And it doesn't matter, you can get the seeds in there. It doesn't matter. Just break them all up. Anyway, um, so let's add a little bit of filtered water. Everywhere. That's oh. correct, Michael. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna pulse it a little bit. Like that. I need my assistant. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll Okay, now I want to stop this for a second. See how there's little chunkies all over? If you like your pizza sauce chunky, keep the chunks. But I tend to like it a little smoother. That looks pretty good to me. It kind of looks like orange juice. Alright, I know. So notice the color right now is very orange. But just wait, the magic happens once it all cooks down. I like magic. Now, maybe maybe two teaspoons. Three teaspoons, something like that. Blended up eight tomatoes. Wow. So that is probably will be enough for about two pizzas. Eight tomatoes? Um Ooh, for two pizzas. Yeah. So, um Okay now so yeah, that's let's, uh, a lot. Let's stop the camera and now we're gonna talk about spices. So you can just stop it for now. Okay, we're back. And we're here to talk about spices. So you're making pizza sauce. What would you add to it to make it taste like pizza sauce? Fresh cloves, that would be even better. But of course we don't. So, um, one clove of garlic is equal to one eighth teaspoon of garlic powder. The next ingredient that is very classic for pizza sauce or even spaghetti sauce would be basil. The next would be oregano. Salt, of course. Onions. I have onions, but I don't feel like cutting them up right now. So I have my onion powder. So let's talk about these. I like to add paprika. To me, it adds um, a depth of color. It's just ground up uh, mild pepper, so it's not like it's adding a whole lot of flavor, but I tend to always add paprika to just about everything I eat. Well, yeah. And then red crushed peppers would be another one that I add for a little kick. All seasoned salt add a little heat. And we've had that for a while. No, um, I actually bought all new peppercorns, by oh. the way. Yeah, this is cool. all brand new organic pepper vinegar. Just a little dash of vinegar. If you want. Um, you can't have a pizza without a crust now, can you? So, we are gonna make our own pizza crust from scratch. And I found the recipe right on this bag here of unbleached white flour made by Red Mill. Right on the side, it's called Perfect Pizza Crust, and it is perfect, I'll tell you. So you just follow the directions. We need one cup of warm water. We're just gonna take our cup and microwave our water for, let's just say 30 seconds and see how hot it gets. And then we get our water. And you wanna make sure it's not too hot. Well, it's not too hot. Um, pour it into a bowl. And then you're gonna put your yeast in, and they say to add one tablespoon of active dry yeast. No, not right now. So here's a little math lesson. How many teaspoons are in a tablespoon? Two. Almost. One. No. Two and a half? No. Three. Four. Three. 
So if you have a if you only have a teaspoon measuring device and you need a tablespoon, you measure this three times. So one. Cool. Anyway, so you just let that sit, okay? Next, we're gonna measure out our other ingredients, which would be two, this <laughs> Okay, two and a half cups unbleached white flour. Then we're gonna add our two and a half cups. Most likely you should use the metal kind, where you can pack it down, but I don't have that right now, so I'm just gonna pour that in, get all the residue out. Okay. Good. One thing I forgot to point out is that this bowl has the yeast and water. You would never want to add salt to this bowl because if you add salt, it deactivates the yeast, and then you don't get that rising effect. You want to. Put a nice clean utensil in here. And I happen to have Metal. a one-fourth teaspoon. So if it's one-fourth and we need a teaspoon, how many do we add? Three. If it's one-fourth one teaspoon and we have four. to get a teaspoon. One-fourth. Yes. Has a um, Kirkland. One teaspoon salt. I just said that. So we mix these up. <laughs> Now you're going to add this mixture. What? <laughs> Again, we're going to use our teaspoon. One, Ew. two, three, one. Kind of looks like throw up. <laughs> also, with, in store With now. green vomit. <laughs> okay, now it's kind of weird looking, right? It's kind of yeah. like, kind of doughy. Like kind of not. Looks like cookie dough. So hold on. With clock, trying to Yep, you can kind of, you know, feel it and see what it's like. And then we're going to knead the dough, and this is where the magic happens. Okay? It's like you're giving it a massage. Make it dry. And then you're going to take some flour. Lightly coat your work surface. Okay, now so let's get all this dough out of here because we work very hard. We want can you stir tomato sauce? Then next thing you want to do is then flour the top of your dough. Push out with your hand and flip. Out, flip, out, flip. And you're turning it as you go. Out, flip, turn, out, flip, turn, out, flip. And then see how the flour is actually um, incorporating into the dough? I don't know, that seems pretty good to me. Okay, now, yes. Put some olive oil into the bowl. on top of the bowl. I know it doesn't look clean, but it is. Um, put it into an area that's semi-warm, so the kitchen is perfect. Let it sit there for 30 minutes. Or, if you peek at it and it looks doubled in size, then it's ready to go. So, Thomas, I want you to take this, and we're not measuring we're just kind of eyeballing. Just dump. Okay. Don't mix it with that spoon. You're gonna need that spoon. Okay. Then, kind of a rule of thumb with the garlic is, uh, I'll just show you what I do. 
and um, I'll show you how I measure. I'm gonna put sort of a coating. I use my pan as my guide and I do a coating kind of like that. I have no idea if that was an eighth or a fourth or teaspoon. I have no idea. But that's just kind of how I roll. You want to just kind of a little bit of salt. You can always add more later. If you want. Right. Keep going. It's kind of hard to get it out of there. There's really not that much there. I wouldn't even say it's a half a teaspoon. Just a little bit of pepper. Yeah, there you go. That's good. So do one, do one shot. Oh, a little bit more. Two, do it again. Three, do it again. Four. That's good. We can always add more there. Um, oh man, that smells good. Mm-hmm. It smells better. Why don't we add some paprika for color? It deepens the color. It's also well, at least it did not go on the ground. Um, and it, it adds actually some health to your dish. You can be pretty generous with that one. Really doesn't add all that much flavor, but it adds actually a lot of antioxidants to your dish. Yeah, mm-hmm. If I wanted, I could taste it right now, but it's so what is the rule? If you were to actually taste this now, what is the rule about the spoon? Do you know? Uh, you have to grab a different one. Exactly. You don't want to put your tasting spoon in. We're back to the sauce tasting. So when I tasted it, it was missing something. So I tweaked it, and some more salt, sugar, and a little bit more garlic, and a little bit more onion powder. Added my vinegar as well, just a dash. Mixed it up, and it is absolutely perfect right now. Flour in hand. the cheese pizza and here's the shiitake mushroom olive pizza had to put it on broil for about 30 seconds to a minute just to get it nice and bubbly but it looks great <laughs> 